Well, I, we're just going to go ahead and get started. So the main thing that I want to emphasize is your job is going to be to make sure that your student is doing what they're supposed to be doing every day. Okay. We have nine days to write between classes. That never includes the class day. So the day before class, they should have their homework finished and they should be getting it together to scan and put on ThinkWave, which I'm going to show you about before we leave. Um, so that's your main job as editor. Your next job as editor is to read what they bring you and make sure they're bringing it to you when it says on the schedule that they're supposed to be bringing it to you, okay? Um, and then you read what they do and you're going to be reading in your handbook of what we're doing. And so you look to see if they did what I said for them to do on that day. It's really, it's really not hard. Those of you that have done this before, if you, if you just read along with the handbook, you will see that that's just your main job. Your main job is to manage them. Okay. You don't have to be great at, um, at grammar spelling, writing, okay? You just have to make sure they're doing their work and you read what they write. And here's the thing about editing. It is way easier to catch other people's mistakes than it is to catch your own mistakes. Can I get an amen on that? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a lot more fun to find other people's mistakes too. You know, it's fun and easy. And in fact, in, um, in level two, we do, no, I guess it's level one. Well, we don't do the peer editing anymore, but I did have, I used to have the students exchange papers because they can find each other's mistakes too. So um, it's just that it's easier for somebody else to see the mistakes than it is for the person that's writing. You, um, I don't have an editor. Everybody needs an editor and I don't have an editor except for you guys. So when you find a mistake in the handbook, or your student finds a mistake, they can mark it and tell me every summer I fix mistakes and then I change things because I'm a serial reviser. And so then I make new mistakes. So they can find my mistakes and they can tell me and that's a big help to me because everybody needs an editor. I mean, I've got four different, five handbooks. Nobody's going to sit and read these things for me except for the students. <laughs> <laughs> that have to, okay? And so that's your main job as editor. So I don't want anybody to feel scared about the word editing, okay? Your main job is just to make sure they're doing what they're doing. Now, I, I, I have all these different kids and I can look at the people that I've had before on the screen and I know the kids that barely need supervision and the kids that have to be set on. And I had one of each kind, okay? So um, unless there's not that many kids out there that will do their work no matter whether you tell them to or not, most kids are not like that. So it really is going to be important for you to make sure that they do your work. Now, there are a few that will do that. And um, somehow they're usually girls, but not always. <laughs> Um, but most kids need, everybody needs accountability and everybody needs help, okay? That's true of even adult students that go to college and it's very true of, you know, students that are in middle school and even in high school, okay? By the time they get to level three, we, we've pretty much gotten past that and mostly the level three students are pretty independent and they do need some light editing, Rebecca, but they don't, it's not like when they're in level one or even in level two, okay? The level three students are headed toward college um, level of independence. And they, at that point, they've been thoroughly trained by their editors and by me, and they know what to do. And it's not as big of a deal, but it is a really big deal in level one. And it's a really big deal on level two also because level two is just hard. Um, in fact, level two is actually harder than level three, I think, because it's just such a big jump, okay? Um, so 
That is your main job. And if you do that, your student is going to do well. And I'm going to show you how you know what it is they're supposed to be doing, okay? The first thing, though, I want to say is I had a couple of really upsetting things happen last year that have never happened before. And I don't want it to happen to anybody else's students because I get really um, sad and I also get very stressed when students aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing and they're not getting the help that they should be getting, okay? And so last year I had one student who was doing substandard work most of the year. And I don't really, I mean, I, I sent lots of emails to her mom and her mom would say, I'll tell her. And, um, and I guess she did. But finally it came out toward, I don't know, three fourths of the way through the year that she was just bringing her, her papers at like 11 o'clock on the night before class. She was like hurrying up and getting it all done and then wanted her mom to edit. And her mom said, I'm just not going to do that. Well, that's why the work was so terrible. And she really hadn't developed the skills that she needed. And so she's not going on to level two. Um, I said I would be happy to take her through level one again. But she was not ready because she didn't do the work. And I don't just put people on it into level two because level two is just like way too hard for that. So um, I really, that was, that was upsetting that, you know, because I think she was fine. There wasn't, she didn't have really any trouble with writing. It's just, she wasn't doing the work. So that's, that's stressful for me. I, I, I get too involved maybe, I guess. Um, the other thing was after, Christmas, one of the people in level two turned in the same paper for assignment number eight that she turned in for assignment number six, except she added like an extra sentence to each paragraph. So she basically plagiarized herself. And I read it and I said, I read the first few sentences and I said, and I sent her an email. I said, oh, you turned in the wrong paper. You turned in the same paper you turned in. She said, well, it's really similar because I'm writing about the same person again. And I was like, okay. So I went back and I read it again and it was the exact same paper, except she had taken out the work cited stuff and she had added an extra sentence to the, to each paragraph. That's plagiarism. Even if you're plagiarizing yourself, it's still plagiarism. Um, so please make sure that you're reading what your student writes and make sure that they're actually doing what it is that I've assigned for them to do. And that if you ever have any questions at all, I always want to know about it, okay? I don't want people suffering in silence. Um, I, want, I want your student to thrive and it's the joy of my life to see these students grow in their writing ability. And I don't care whether your student is you know, going to be National Honor Society president, or if your student has a hard time just putting down a few sentences on a page, if they do the work and you work with them, they're going to get better at the writing. And I can say that it's not because I'm so great. It's because it's really a great method and it works every time it's done if you do it. But there is no magic pill for writing. And so if it isn't done, then it isn't going to do anything. There is no you know, it's not just going to kind of seep into their brains. It's hard work. Writing is hard work. And so if they do it, though, they'll get better. And it's really exciting. Those of you who have had students in IEW, whether it's my class or not, do y'all raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about with seeing that progress in their ability to write. Yeah. It's just, I can't believe how wonderful it is and how well it works. So now that all sounds like very serious, but we have a good time in class. Even though we're online, we still have a good time in class. So um, they are going to enjoy themselves. And uh, let's see, uh, Ani Rude, you're the only student that's actually here uh, in, this, in this group here. So um, I think we had a lot of fun last year in prep one. <laughs> Yes, we did. it was a lot of fun. Yes. So um, it is fun. We're learning lots of stuff and we're doing some hard things, but we're also having a good time. And these students will get to know each other 
in class. And if your student ever wants to make a connection with another student, they can talk to you about it and I'll pass the message on to the other mom. And, you know, I have had students, online students become friends in other states, you know? So it's it, it can be really fun and, and a good way to make, um, to make friends and we will enjoy being together. So now let me tell you how we're going to, uh, how you're gonna know what to do. First of all, um, I sent by um, priority mail um, on Monday, I sent packets to everybody. Is there anybody that didn't get their packet yet? Any read you didn't get yours? Okay, did everybody else get your packet? Okay. Okay, well, Ani Rude, you know about you know about the colored sticky tab. So um, the level one students won't be using these until um, assignment number four, and then they'll use them for assignment number five and six also. But um, you can take one out of the packet if you have it there with you, or if you have some other kind of sticky note, you'd rather do that and just leave the packet closed, you can. Level two students are gonna be using theirs right away and also the level three students. So y'all can go ahead and open those if you want to. I love colored sticky, sticky tabs. They're one of the greatest inventions. I use them for all kinds of things and I especially use them for my writing handbooks. And when I read books and I find a, something that I really like, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, I always have colored sticky tabs when I'm reading. And I'll stick these on the edge of the page where whatever it is I'm trying to remember where I can find it again. It's way better than highlighting because it doesn't mess up the book and it's a lot easier to find than going back and looking for highlighting. So I recommend that you have lots of these and the best price I've found on these are the Staples ones. So that's why I always get these at Staples every year. Um, so I recommend using them and always having them, just have them all over the house. So you can always find them when you need them. Okay, so the first, um, what I want to show you is in each handbook is what you need to be doing before the first class. So in all of the handbooks, the assignment sheets are in the last section of the handbook. Um, and generally there'll be an assignment sheet and then on the back there'll be a composition checklist. Uh, it's a little bit different for prep one because I wanted them to be able to see their checklist and assignment page on the same one. But all of the composition checklists are also on um, ThinkWave on each assignment. So you can just print it out. In fact, all of the forms that they need for the whole year are on ThinkWave on each of the assignments. Now, don't go and print all of the... Um, Uh-oh. I guess we lost Robin. Um, don't go and print all of the composition check checklists yet because I still want to go back and um, update a few of them. But the first thing you need to do, um, prep one people, the prep one handbook. On page 97, this is the preparation for the first class. So just um, put a sticky note, a sticky tab, right on the edge of that page. And this is what I'll have the kids do in class every time. I'll have them move the sticky tab from page to page as we go through the handbook. It's nothing like being on the wrong page and doing the wrong assignment. I've had students email me in great distress two or three days after class saying, I don't know what any of this means. And I said, well, that's because we haven't got to that one yet. <laughs> so um, this is the pre-class assignment. You don't have to worry about any of the other assignment pages before the first class, okay? So just do that. And with, um, with level, with, with prep one, you're going to just be familiarizing yourself with the handbook, reading some pages in the handbook. Um, you're not going to have any editing to do, editors, in the, uh, the assignment, but you go ahead and get familiar with what you're supposed to be doing. Um, there is, uh, as it mentions in number four on this page, there is a class calendar posted on messages on ThinkWave. And if you haven't yet printed out calendars, that was in the information. Robin must be having 
trouble. I don't know how to, there she goes. Okay. <clears throat> if you haven't printed out a calendar um, and posted it somewhere obvious, like on your refrigerator or something like that, do that because it's real easy to get mixed up about, hey, Robin, sorry, we lost you there for a while. Hey. Um, yeah, my uh, computer locked up and went black. I'm sorry about that. Oh. That's okay. We're, I'm just showing everybody what they're supposed to be doing for the first class. So, um, got that. Okay, this, great. This is the prep one, and so you put a put a sticky note or some kind of marker on page ninety seven, and this is what prep one people need to be doing for the for the very first class. And mostly, they're just um, they're just reading and you're, you are just reading. The other people have some other things that they have to do. Oh, you cannot min minimize Zoom. Okay, um, let's see. I'm just going to see, I want to get my, um, okay, all right. So that's prep one. Anybody in prep one class have any questions about that? No? Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. Level one people. Level one. And oh, make sure you mark your student's handbook and your handbook too, because you're going to want to read along with. And usually the first thing it says on the student assignments is, um, take this to your editor and, 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 and um, tell them to read these pages. Well, the editor will have their own book this time. But so you should be able to do that without your student bringing it to you. All right, level one people, your assignment is on page 196. Now, level one people and level two and level three all have a, um, a writing plan to do. And I am I think I listed that for prep one also, because what I want is for your students to commit to doing a, doing their writing at a certain time every day. Let's see. Let me click on the pre-class assignment. Okay. Yeah, I think after I, I redid the, the prep one handbooks is when I came up with this. So um, prep one people, go back to your page there and um, write that um, to look at the pre-class assignment and do the writing plan. Click on the writing plan document and fill it out. Let me show everybody what that is right now. I'm going to do a screen share. So, um, okay, share. All right. Okay. So here's the screen share. And this is what mine looks like. Yours will look a little bit different. But when you click on it, in fact, let me just go to somebody's, um, somebody's right now. Um, click on Grayson's. Okay. So this is what your, your, your ThinkWave page should look like. When you open it up, it'll open up to this. And to find the assignments, you go to, this is not, no, this is not it. Hold on just a second. Oh, I think I closed it out accidentally. Um, hold on just a minute. Let me go back again. Gradebook. Grayson. Visit student account. Okay, that's what I need to do. Visit student account. Okay. Um, so when you open up your ThinkWave, this is what you will see. And to find the assignment pages, oh, here's the class calendar. It's really easier to see on your actual computer than it is to see on, uh, somebody was trying to find it on their cell phone last night and you couldn't see all of the titles of the messages, okay? Click on assignments. And the one we're going to be starting with is pre-class, pre and it'll be on. It'll be the same on all of them. 
And so everybody is going to fill this out. And some of, some of the students have already actually done this. But what I want is for the students to um, commit to a time of day where they're going to work on their writing class, their writing assignment, okay? Uh, this is not opening. Oh, wait a minute, here we go. Okay, that'll open in just a minute. Um, this summer, I read a lot of stuff and listened to a lot of interviews by um, a guy that wrote a book called Atomic Habits. Have any of you all ever read Atomic Habits? It's a great book, okay? So last year was very trying for me. We had a lot of very serious sicknesses in my family, um, extended family, and a couple of deaths, one that was expected and one that wasn't, uh, actually two that weren't expected. And um, it was just really hard to stay on top of things. So I was looking for help to get myself more organized. And I found a book called Atomic Habits. And so I learned some things and I've been practicing them all summer. And I hope that's going to really help me with writing classes. And one thing that um, they talked about in one of the interviews was um, there's a, some guys called the minimalists and they actually interviewed the guy that wrote Atomic Habits. And they took a question from a, uh, a listener about she wanted to become a better writer and she wanted to know some things to do to become a better writer. And they all agreed that the very best thing to do if you need to become a better writer is to have a time of day when you write and do it every day at that time. You don't sit down and go, well, I'm not sure if I feel like doing that today or whatever. You just, you just have the time and you sit down and you do it. <clears throat> and that's the way I have to approach grading. I love reading the students' papers. I love it. But I just hate grading. But I got to stop saying that to myself. <laughs> um, but I have gotten a lot better at grading. I really have. And this year, I'm going to be even better, Lord willing, because I am going to have a time of day that I do my grading. And that's going to be at 10 o'clock in the morning, except for on, on online class days, which will be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday every other week. 10 o'clock is going to be my grading time. So I'm going to be suffering right along with the students. Okay. So I want them on their, um, <clears throat> their writing plan to pick a time. And they probably will think this is corny. Okay. That's okay. I don't care. <laughs> my son got to be really close friends with a guy that had been in my class years before, and he was just too cool for school when he was in the class, you know, and, um, but they got to be really good friends later. And that he was in my son's wedding. And he, when they got to be friends, he said, man, your mom was so corny. <laughs> So I knew he thought that. I could just tell by the way he kind of, he didn't roll his eyes, but he just sort of looked like, oh. So I am a little bit corny. Um, but this is what I want them to do. I want I want you to go through this with them. They're going to actually fill this out because this is MLA and this is their first chance at working on MLA. And mostly the the prep one students won't be doing this kind of thing, but they just need to be doing this, that they just need to do this writing plan thing and upload it. Okay. So they're going to fill in first name, last name, uh, the day of their first class. And I want you to read through this with them because everybody can learn to write well. It's just like learning to play the piano or learning to play soccer. So it's easier for some people than it is others, but everybody can learn to do it. Okay. Um, and so at the bottom, there's this little part here. This school year, I will practice the habit of writing by working on my writing assignments Monday through Friday, except for the scheduled weeks off and not on writing class day, of course. That's a different day. Except for the scheduled weeks off at Thanksgiving, Christmas, and spring break. In consultation with my editor, I have chosen whatever a.m., p.m. to a.m., p.m. So, like, I'm going to be doing probably grading from 10 to 12, but an hour. Pick an hour to do it, okay? Um for my time for writing. So if they want, I have one student that has listed 8.30 in the morning for their writing. 
I've noticed several students who have listed three o'clock in the afternoon for their writing. And maybe that's the most convenient time, but whew, it's hard to do writing at three o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> So I would suggest getting it over with before lunch, but that's just me. If that's what works best for you and your student and your family, then go for it. But have in mind that this is going to be the time for writing. Now, things happen. People get sick. Emergencies happen. Cars break down. Sometimes, and this that's why I love this Atomic Habits guy. This guy goes, you know, life happens. He said that you, you, set the, you set the habit and you, your intention is to do it. And he said, and if you do miss it, try not to miss twice in a row. You know, if you miss it this day, it's not too bad to catch up with writing one day. But if, if you get behind in writing, it's really bad if you get behind on the schedule. Does anybody want to? Verify that, that that's true. <laughs> okay. Try God not to. Huh? Oh, my God, is it ever. Oh, it my really kid is one of those that wants to write her first draft in, like, the last three days. And I'm like, dude, no, no. And it's not because I don't remind her. But she has been on some serious struggle bus. <laughs> well, she, she did really well last year getting her stuff done. She did. I'm glad to hear that. She did. Yes. So I'm um, just just try not to get behind because it really snowballs really really fast. Okay. So level one people, you're going to do the writing plan thing. Prep one people go on and find it and do it. They don't have to worry about writing stuff. They just the prep one people don't. They just need to commit themselves. And you all decide what's the best time for your family. Um. The rest of the stuff, well, you can read it. I have lots of videos and different things that they'll be watching along. I probably am missing some of them. I need to make sure I've got links on the messages. Um, <clears throat> watch all my videos. It's not riveting television, and I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> but that it will help them, okay? And if a picture is worth a thousand words, a video is worth a million words of me telling people how to do something. Okay. Um, any questions from the level one people? After you read through it, you may have questions. And if you do have questions, then you can certainly email me anytime. Okay. I'm really big on people letting me know when they need help. <clears throat> Um, Deborah's wondering if anybody else is having lots of stops and starts in the video. Is anybody else having that? Let me respond to her. Um, Deborah, can you hear me? I don't know if you can or not. <clears throat> okay. I am recording it, so I hope I can get this edited and up so people can see it. Maybe by tomorrow if you need to watch something else. Send this to her. Okay. Yes, I am I am gonna record it. So um because I think we're missing some other people, but I just I don't know who they are right now. Um okay, level two people. You're special. <laughs> you get two handbooks. <laughs> That's kind of scary. Um, this is a special handbook for the very first essay we do, which is a project that's near and dear to my heart. It's called Planning for Success. And in there, I'm teaching them the essay procedure and the essay form. And I'm also helping them to... Um, I inspire them with principles of success for the teen years to make the teen years the launching pad of life. And I am crazy about this. The principles are do hard things and 10,000 hours. And, um, you know, I may have to revise this essay next year and add Atomic Habits as one of the, but it, it was too late this summer to try to grapple with that. So it's still just the two principles. Um, 
So level two people, you have a good bit of work to do. So don't put it off. Start on it tomorrow. Um, there's an MLA um, program that, that you have to work your way through and print a certificate at the end. Also, there's some there's a lot of reading of articles for the first essay that you have to do. And um, let's see, what's the other thing? Oh, yeah, they need to do their writing plan also. I'm not sure if I have that writing plan on here. Um, the writing plan I came up with kind of later. So um, level two people, please at the top, write, go to pre-class ThinkWave and, and uh, do the do the writing plan document. Write that at the top of this. This is on page three of your Planning for Success handbook. There will be some pages it refers to that you need to read in the main handbook, but that's all on this document, okay? And get started on it tomorrow so they can get it done before class starts next week. Um, level two people are the ones that have the most to do to get ready for the first class. Um, and you all know how this goes, so I, I, I don't think there's anything unusual, but if you find something unusual that you need help with, please, please, please get in touch with me, okay? Elena and um, Kim and Carrie, do y'all have any questions you want to ask about that right now? Yeah, I do have a question. Um, so I'm a little, like I get go to ThinkWave and do the writing plan that you mm -hmm. showed us. But mm -hmm. when I look on level three, you know, it's broken out by day one, day two, day three, day four, so on. What do you want us to do before the class? On level three? I mean, page, page three. three, sorry. Um, level two, pre, oh, it yeah. says pre-class reading and assign. Oh, there's six days before the actual class. Yeah, so you have Friday. Oh. Oh. Actually, you really don't have quite, um, six days, but they can read more than one article in, in a day. These articles are not long. So just, just okay. kind of smush a couple of the articles into them and they're high interest articles um, and they will enjoy them. So uh, you might have to double up on a couple of the articles. Like here's one of my favorites, Lessons from the Vikings. <laughs> it's very short, but it's so good. Um, so they can double up on the short ones and get them done. That's the main thing is reading these articles so we can discuss them in Got class. It. Okay. 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 Um, but they should go ahead and do the MLA formatting and just figure out when you're going to do your writing. Okay. So that was a good question, Carrie. Thank you. I redid that schedule, but I guess I still didn't make it short enough. Um, okay. Any other level two questions? And again, you can contact me after class. Okay, all right. And then the level three people, um, they have, let's see, on page, level three people work on a paper all throughout the year along with other papers called Great Idea Gone Wrong, where they write about a big idea that seemed like it was gonna be a good idea and then it turned out to be a terrible idea, you know, like communism, for instance. And they, they research that and they write us um, one essay on history of the great idea, positives of the great idea, and then the last essay they write is negatives of the great idea, and then they put them all together. So um, it's a big paper and it's really a great term paper kind of paper like they would do in college. So that, on page 228, um, Rebecca, mm -hmm. stick your sticky note on that. And... There's reading to do, which mostly it'll be familiar, but what you and um, Julia really need to decide is what she would like to write about. And I've listed quite a number of things that she can choose from. Mm -hmm. You know, communism is always a popular one, but um, there's all kinds of terrible ideas <laughs> that nevertheless got implemented. Um, so you and Julia discuss it, and if she needs to contact me, um, let me know if it's an idea that's not on the list, then I'll need to talk to her about it. Cause sometimes students come up with really cool sounding ideas, but they don't work for this paper. Right. Okay. So make sure if, if y'all don't pick one of these that you, that she contacts me. Okay. Um, 
there's some other things she has to do to get ready, but that's the main thing y'all have to decide there. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. Now, does everybody feel like they know what they need to do to get ready for the first class? Okay. We'll be steadily building skills. Don't even think about what's going to come next because it's just like when you started taking math. If they started you out in algebra, you know, in kindergarten, that would be really bad. But they didn't. They started out with counting and then they started doing numbers and, you know, and, and then it moved on to addition. And, and so this is how IEW works. That is the beauty of IEW. It's skill upon skill. So I had a student in level two who um, at Christmas, she said to her mother, and she's a really good student, and she said to her mother, um, can I talk to you about something, mom? And her mom said, yeah, sure. She said, well, I looked ahead, and for the final exam in level two, we have to write a five-paragraph essay in an hour and a half, and I'm really scared. <laughs> so her mom talked to me about it. I said, she's going to do fine, and she will be able to do it. And you know what? She did. So don't, don't look ahead too much and um, don't, you know, don't worry about what's coming next because when it comes, you're going to be ready for it, okay? It's really exciting and amazing how it works. Um, and you'll just move into it. And if, if you want to learn more about writing, you're going to find out you've learned more about writing yourself because that's what happens when you are reading all of this IEW stuff and you're supervising your student. Anybody in here done Suzuki piano or a Suzuki strings or any of the Suzuki classes? Okay, Deborah. All right. Well, IEW is like Suzuki because actually Andrew Pudua, who is the director of IEW, was a Suzuki violin teacher. And so in Suzuki, the parent attends the student's piano lesson or string lesson or whatever it is, and they learn all the techniques as well. And then they work with their students after um, class. They work with them during the week before they go back for the lesson. So they don't practice it wrong the whole time. And so the students make a lot of really good progress because they are, um, they've got somebody older and more mature that probably understands things a little better than they do. And they're helping them and making sure they do it correctly and making sure they do it at all. Um, I could have stood for somebody just to sit down next to me and made sure I was practicing when I was supposed to be practicing piano and I was just flipping through my piano books <laughs> while I ran out the clock. Um, so that's the great thing about IEW. People learn, um, they, they steadily build skill upon skill and it's, it's very doable. Hello, you guys. Is that, is that your prep one student there? Hey, looking forward to seeing you next week. Okay. You can speak. Say hi. hi. That's Hannah. Hi, Hannah. So while, I while I have you on here, I have a question. Do we need to go over anything with this or just make sure she has it? Uh, make sure she has it. We're going to start working with it. You can look through it if you want to. And, um, oh, oh, you prep one, people. I have to give you um, a link to my, um, oh, I can't remember what that's called. It's where you share files. What's that? Dropbox. Okay. I have the poetry recordings on Dropbox and you will go on I'll send you the link and you will you will download the poetry recordings and you can start listening to the poems and um, they're really entertaining and, and you'll listen to them. That's another Suzuki thing. In Suzuki, you get the whole CD of music for the book that you're working on and you start listening to the music way before you even get to that song in the book. So when you get to the song in the book, it's in your head, all the phrasing and the... Um, the dynamics and the tempo is already in your head because you've been listening to it. And so the poetry recordings do the same thing. Oh, one thing I do want to say is I do, um, besides the grade that they'll actually get, which is on each um, composition checklist, I'm also taking into account um, different 
uh, standards. And, and some of that is whether they turn their work in on time, whether they follow directions, whether they um, seem to be generally writing correct sentences. Um, I don't have grammar on my composition checklist, except as it applies to the actual skill that I'm teaching, such as uh, sentence types or dress ups, which you'll find out what those are if you haven't learned that already in IEW. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm correcting their grammar when I see wrong grammar. I'm correcting their spelling when I see wrong spelling, but I'm not taking off for that. Um, but I am, I am looking to see if they're paying attention during class, if they're prepared when they come to class, if they're turning in their work on time, if they are um, participating in class. Um, so that's a, something that I use to help me know whether a student is ready to go on to the next level when the time comes. And so that's why that one student just wasn't able to go on to level two because she just had not been doing the work. Um, and she hadn't been doing those skills that help her to be strong and ready for level two, okay? So um, I've got those listed actually on the website, um, on the ThinkWave, and um, I'll make sure everybody gets a copy of those. So you can help your student by making sure that they are actually you insist that they follow directions, insist that they do the work according to the schedule. Um, and that is writing, you know, writing can be challenging, but everybody will get better if they do these things. So there's no reason for anybody to flounder. And if, oh, and if your student has learning problems, and I've had so many students that have had learning problems, and I have some students that have zero learning problems, I've had so many students with every learning problem you can possibly think of that I can probably help you come up with something that will work for them. So if you're having a problem, please let me know um, and we will figure out what to do with it, okay? Um, I'll also give you advice when it comes to the research papers about the level of um, research books that you can use for your student it doesn't have to be hard in IEW we work from easy to difficult you always start with the easy oh and IEW one level one people when you first start your student if your student especially doesn't really have any problems with language um it's not going to take them an hour to do these first assignments for the first couple of writing classes okay Make sure they sit down anyway and do each day just like it is on the schedule because what they're doing is they're building the habit of showing up. And that is what it's going to take them so far, okay? Um, it's not going to be hard. And some of them may go, Mom, I can probably just go ahead and do all nine of these today and get them over with. And then I won't have to do any more for the next however many days. Don't let them do that. <laughs> Okay, make them work according to the schedule. Let them build that habit of daily writing. That's where you make your real progress in, in daily writing. Okay. Um, any questions about that? And I say this as a person who is not, I love to fly by the seat of my pants. Okay? <laughs> I don't like to be constrained. <laughs> But I have to do this on this day and this on that day and this particular time. I don't like that. But I, my peace is wrecked when I don't maintain some kind of schedule. And I'm so much more peaceful when I do have a plan and I follow it. And I know some of you know, and some of you people are thinking, well, of course. And some of you that are like me are going, yeah, I know what she means. So mm -hmm. um, follow the plan. It'll make life better. It's not, uh, it's not because I'm a wacko or a control freak. Um, I just want to get them ready so that when they go to, they go off to wherever it is they're going off to. Like, you know, um, Luke went off, Luke Hamilton went off to, you know, this very difficult prep school this year. I mean, not off. I mean, he's in town living at home, but I mean, he, he developed these great habits and, and I'm sure they're going to stand them in good stead. 
And that's what you really need when you get into stuff that's really, really hard, you know? And I have no doubt he's going to do fine. So um, don't let them don't let them do however they like during the school year. Make them follow the plan, and it's really going to serve them well. Ten minutes of piano practice every day is mu much better than an hour of piano practice one time before you go back for your lesson. Some of you all know what I mean. So mm -hmm. I had the giant mega practice sessions too when I was taking piano. Um, <laughs> but there's something magic that happens in the brain overnight while you're asleep. That's why it's so important to do it daily, not the weekend. I'm not that kind of a wacko. All right. Uh, any other questions? Yes, I do have a question. Okay, so Brandy. I... Are you able to tell if I could say Cooper went on today and did his pre-class assignment, but for mm -hmm. whatever reason, I cannot access Haley's account from, from the student perspective. I can see her on, on my account. Did you I, log out of your account? I did, but it, it, for whatever reason, I tried to reset the password for her, like, it has just been a nightmare, and I am not that technologically savvy. Okay. <laughs> I send, to log into his. So. Send me an email right after class, Okay, right after this meeting, and remind me, and I will go in and reset. Have I done that with you before? Yes, I've done, I've done it before. I've done it with several people, yeah. um, and it always happens to several people every year. I don't know why. Because ThinkWave is really great, but it, some, there's always a few little bugs to work out. As soon as we're done, send me an email or remind me, okay, and I'll right. do that. I'll do that tomorrow. Okay? okay. I just thought but, maybe I'm doing something wrong. I know it's case sensitive, so I wrote it down to make sure I had no, that. No, right. I'm having to reset somebody else's too um, okay. for that same reason. I've already reset another person, and they they did. It, it worked after we reset it. So anybody else having trouble with ThinkWave accessing the student? No. If you do have trouble when you go and try to upload the document, please let me know because online students have no other way of submitting their homework except through the student access. And that's probably because ThinkWave, like for instance, uh, Elena has got two kids. Um, you know, they're doing level two this year. And school systems use ThinkWave. And um, there'll be parents with multiple children. And so they don't want people uploading it from the parent's account because then there's all kinds of things that could happen and go wrong with things uploaded to the wrong class and all this kind of stuff. So um, homework can only be uploaded from a student portal, not from a parent portal, okay? All right, Brandy, but it did work for your son. Hmm. Okay. Yes, well, at least, at least one of them worked. That's great. <laughs> yeah, he turned it in. I wanted to make sure. I didn't want to wait till yes, the last one. Yes, time. okay. Yeah. I looked at yeah. several of them before I really hit the beginning of the week, um, but I haven't looked lately. So uh, because of, I, I, I did my other parents meeting on Tuesday, and then I was cleaning up all the wreckage from that. <laughs> because we um, live in Arizona, and their class is at 7 a.m., before the time change. Yeah. So I do not want to be up at 6.30 going, how do we do this? Yes. So, okay. Um, That's another point, y'all. Try to get them to upload their homework the day before. It's just easier because you just never know. Like I had trouble getting onto Zoom today. You know, sometime, you know, just, just try, they should be finished with their homework the day before class. So it would be better just to get into the habit of going ahead and uploading it. And then you don't have to worry and everybody's running around. Oh, I don't, I can't find my, I can't find my final draft. I know it's on here somewhere, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> okay. Any other Thank questions? You. That's great. Don't forget to send me that email, Brandy. Okay. 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 I have a Any question. Questions? Okay. Um, and I'm sorry about my computer. I don't know what happened. It just um, shut down on me and locked me out. So um, you might have gone over this. We're in prep one. And uh, who is who is talking? Robin, to Bailey. Oh, Robin. Okay. I'm so, for, for, yeah, I want to make sure Robin. that I'm looking at the right thing for the prep one mm -hmm. um, assignment. Do we do the page 98 and 99 where it, it says level one? No. 
You do page okay. ninety. You do page ninety-seven. Correct. I have that. That's and all. Then is, okay. Um, this is how it always works, and yeah, this will be soon familiar, and it is for level two and level three people. Um, where it's where it says the assignment number, that's always after that class number. So we'll do class one, and then they'll start on assignment one. Does that make sense? So, uh, yeah, so you never are working ahead. Um, I'll do class one, and then the very the very uh, first assignment they'll do will be assignment number one. Then we'll do class and two, then we'll and then we'll do class two, and then they'll start with assignment right. number two. Okay. Right, but is that page 98 for prep one? Because at the top it says level one, and we're not in level one. Yeah, mark that out. I, don't, I didn't even know that was there. See, this is what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, that's not that's not right. Okay. Just assignment number one. I don't even know how that got on there. Did I do that all the way through? It says that all the way through, yes. Okay, yeah. Um, great. I need to stick that on there and mark that out. That must have been there last year, too, because I did not change these assignment sheets. Okay. Okay, that's a good thing to know. Thank you. Mm. All right, and that's what I'm talking about, people. <laughs> I have to take it off of there. All right, I redo my handbooks every summer, but I never get them completely perfect. So, okay, good question. Anything else? Anybody else like to know? Anything else anybody can think of right now? Okay, Jess. <laughs> I just have a quick question about um, when they're actually in class, is this fine for them to just be, I mean, do they have to wear headphones and microphone or just through Zoom is fine? The only reason they would need to do that is if there was a lot of background noise. Like okay. one, one year, I, there was some, you know, some one year I had a girl who's, you know, they had some construction going on okay. in the house. And so somehow the headset and microphone thing kept that from coming okay. through but no I'd, I'd prefer that they not right. have to mess because that's just something else to go wrong I agree I agree Te technical technical issues are um, almost every class will have some kind of technical issue with zoom and zoom is wonderful and mm -hmm. it's so much better than Skype which is what I started out using oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but usually something will go wrong for somebody Somebody suddenly won't have a good connection or they can't hear or they I can't hear them or their screen will go black or, you know, but any anything we can do to decrease the chances of that, that's the best thing. Sounds okay. good. Thanks. The other thing is, is if there's a lot of noise in your house, um, I, I can't believe you have nine children, Elena. <laughs> not hearing a, any chaos going on last year. Um, if you do have uh, a lot of noise going on in your house, your student needs to be in a room with a door that's shut. Um, I can hear toilets flushing. I can hear mom washing dishes, people vacuuming, the dogs barking. Um, yes, oh, it doesn't, you know, so put them somewhere where they're going to be able to, you know, close out the the noise because um, it probably won't sound really loud on your end, but it gets amplified over the speakers and then then it really gets to be a mess. And uh, let's see, I remember last year Rosa had a lot of trouble with her sound. Um, and so sometimes she just had to put her microphone off and then she would just turn it on when she had to talk. I don't know why, but she was getting a lot of reverb. Um, so, you know, Things just happen and we'll just work them out as the problems crop up. But really, Zoom is pretty trouble-free and ThinkWave is really pretty trouble-free. I'm really happy with both of those services. So, um, okay. Any other questions? So does the class start this Tuesday, the first class? Yes, yes. Um, Tuesday, level one online, 10 o'clock. Wednesday, level two at 10 o'clock. Thursday, prep one at 10 o'clock. And then Julia will meet at three o'clock 
with the local people for level three. So yes, all the online classes are at 10, except for the, the level three class. So, okay, any other questions? I have a question. Um, okay. I think I'd like to just maybe talk to you at, towards the end, because I don't want to monopolize people's time. But I okay. just wanted to kind of discern, you kind of scared me a little bit when you were talking about how intense level two is and how maybe it's harder than level three. And mm -hmm. so I'm just wanting to kind of get my mind wrapped around what we're walking into. Um, okay. So, so I'm just kind of bookmarking that so you know that I'd like to talk to you okay. if possible. Okay. All right. Thanks. It's just that it's a big, it's, it's change. You know, level two is very abstract thinking as opposed to level one, which I call nuts and bolts, you know? So it's, it's a complete, it, it, it's the abstract thinking that makes it um, different. The writing isn't really different. It's the thinking. Does that make sense? I'm fine with that. Yep, Aiden's great with abstract thinking. He's hard with writing, but abstract thinking he's wonderful in. The so writing is that, not, that makes the me writing is not harder. It's, um, especially with the younger students, you know, because sometimes I have students that go into it in eighth grade. I can't, is he going to be in ninth, tenth? I can't remember. He, he's 16. I, he'll be okay. in 10th. But okay, like yeah. he would, we held him back in pre-K because he was kind of mm -hmm. hyper. But right. he, you know, age-wise, he'd normally be a junior, but he's a well, That's good. A, a lot of times I really see a big, you know, struggle with um, like eighth graders that go into level two, you know, because it's the abstract thinking thing. Okay. So that, that's it, that. Carrie. That's it. I, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Great. I'm sorry to scare y'all. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think he'll do fine. I do. Um, but okay. really, when they get into level three, everybody thinks, oh, level two was so hard. Level three must be really, really super hard. But it's not. It's just and learning I, to take the things you've already known and to use them in lots of different ways. So can I just jump in there for a second? I just want to say that there is a huge leap between eighth grade and ninth grade um, because my, my oldest son had trouble with level one at the end because it was such a new program. And then he went into high school and that was a huge leap for our homeschool program as far as writing and he didn't do level two IEW now I'm kicking myself for not making him do that but Carrie he will be your your son will be a-okay because if he's already been doing some writing in high school and he already knows how to do the abstract thinking this program will help him get there I promise I have, I, I have every confidence that he can do it oh yeah thank that's you. wonderful that's great Brandy thank you for that you're welcome. That's, that's very helpful. I hope so. Um, it is. It is. So any anybody else have any other questions or concerns or um, you may have more questions after you read your stuff and just, just get in touch with me. We're going to be building a closet this weekend, but <laughs> I'll check my emails. So we've had our whole house torn up this year, this summer, because we've been renovating our bedroom and everything from our bedroom was everywhere and then we had new carpet put down in the upstairs so then everything that was upstairs got put in our bedroom while we got the carpet put down in the rest of the house and the rest of the upstairs so things have been a mess here and I'm ready to get back to um some kind of normalcy <laughs> so y'all are y'all are gonna help us put us over the finish line <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, if there's nothing else right now, I don't think I have anything else to say except just I'm very excited about working with your kids. They they I, I keep doing this because I I love the results. And I'm so happy that I get to work with the kind of families that I get to work with and and I get to see these kids grow and change and mature and become so good at what they do so um I'm very proud of them I had some really good things happen with a lot of my students this past year as far as writing goes and uh it's been very exciting so I had one student who was the youngest editor in the country of a weekly newspaper a weekly small town newspaper and um he did it for nine months and then they sold the newspaper and 
he, he was glad to be done with it. Now he's in college, but he's, um, I don't teach journalism. He had to learn that <laughs> on the job, but um, that was really exciting. I had students winning writing contests and all. And so I get a lot of um, just excitement out of seeing the kids come along and do well in their classes, whatever they are, or whatever it is they're going to be doing their writing in, you know, um, doesn't necessarily mean that they have to go to college, but everybody needs to know how to write, whether you're going to go to college or not. That's not really the, the point of it. Writing is a life skill that is very important. So anyway, thank you so much for um, joining me this year. And we're going to be getting to know each other, at least over the computer and working together. And I'm looking forward to great things with your students. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, y'all have a nice evening. And Ashley, thank you for that nice note. I'm real excited too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, y'all stay in touch, okay? Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.